Hi, this is David, a bionic turtle with an illustration of the Sortino ratio, which is a risk-adjusted performance measure. And to illustrate the Sortino, I'm going to compare it to the Sharp ratio, which is much more popular. And in both cases, though, I need a series of simulated portfolio returns. That's right here in this column, and you can download this spreadsheet on the website. But in light green here, I've got these simulated numbers that I just randomly generated for portfolio returns. And the period here is monthly. So first month, second month, and so on. I have 30 monthly returns. This column here is the key idea for the Sortino, and that is that we specify a minimum acceptable return. That's the term that that's the word that we use, or the phrase that we use in the FRM. This is also called the hurdle rate. And so I've got some exaggerated numbers here. I'm going to assume a hurdle of 1% per month or 12% annually. So that's why I've got 1% in each of the months. That's our hurdle. This column here just has the delta between the portfolio return, in this case 3.4%, and the hurdle. 1%. So we've got here an excess over the hurdle of 2.4% in the first month. And then next month, our portfolio actually, it produces negative 1, and that's below the hurdle. So the excess relative to the hurdle is negative 1.1. This column here I need for the Sortino because we're not going to use calculate a regular volatility. We're going to calculate a downside deviation. And so we only want to pull out here into a subset the returns that fall short of the hurdle. So in that first month, the portfolio beats the hurdle. It's not included here. This is only if portfolio falls short of the hurdle. So in that second month, we fell short of the hurdle. It gets included. So I have a subset here of those returns that fell short of the hurdle. Final two columns are for, respectively, the Sortino and, for comparison's sake, the Sharpe ratio. This column here, hopefully is more familiar, I use this to calculate the traditional volatility measure. So it's portfolio return minus the average squared. So the difference here with the Sortino is I'm taking portfolio return, but instead of the average, I'm using the hurdle. And I'm squaring that. So you can see here in Excel, all we end up doing is where on those months where we fell short of the hurdle, that difference here is getting squared. So it's much like squaring the delta here, but where we're not using the average return, but rather the minimum acceptable return. So that's going to be give me a series of squared differences. And then I move down to the calculation of the Sortino. And let me just note here in terms of annual, again, our annual minimum acceptable return or hurdle is 12%. And our portfolio, our annual portfolio return happens to be 14.5% approximately. So for all those simulated monthly returns, the average monthly return was about 1.21%. And so our annual portfolio return for our purposes here is 14.5%. So I see I've got that specified here. Okay, so given that, I'm going to move down to the chart. On the right here, graphically, in green, we've got the portfolio return. This is each month. Annually, that's an average of 14.5% for the portfolio. The blue line here represents the risk-free rate, a quarter of a percent per month or 3% annual. And then the orange line is the minimum acceptable return, 1% per month or 12% annual. So the first thing we can do is compute the sharp ratio, which is going to be the excess return of the portfolio over the risk-free rate divided by portfolio volatility. So here's the portfolio return of 14.5%. That means the portfolio excess return above the risk-free rate of 3% is 11.5. 14.5 minus 3, 14.5 minus 3, it's 11.5% in the numerator. Then for the denominator, we just want the plain old portfolio volatility or annualized standard deviation. So this is in blue here. It's 10.66. We're making use of the columns above. So here we've got that sum of the portfolio return minus the average. We're squaring those delta 
we're squaring those and then dividing by the number or n of 30, 30 months. So that is the average squared difference, which in this case gives us a monthly variance. You can see that calculation here. The square root of that, all I do here is take the square root of that monthly variance and we get the monthly standard deviation. And then finally, we take that monthly standard deviation and in this case multiply by a square root of 12 to produce an annualized standard deviation or what we could call a volatility. So that means we've got 11.5% in the numerator and 10.66% in the denominator and that gives us a ratio here, a sharp ratio of 1.08 which is very good. Okay, that's the sharp and then the Sortino generalizes from that where the key difference again is that we've introduced the minimum acceptable return. So in the numerator it's really portfolio excess return over the minimum acceptable return and then a denominator instead of that plain old portfolio volatility we use the downside deviation which itself is also informed by the minimum acceptable return. So for the numerator, now, in, now notice this is in orange, our Annual excess return is 2.5%. You can see that's pretty straightforward. Portfolio 14.5 minus risk-free rate. I'm sorry. For portfolio 14.5 minus the hurdle of 12% annual is 2.5%. So that's 2.5% excess return in excess of the hurdle for the numerator. Now for the denominator, it's analogous to, that's right down here, it's analogous to the volatility calculation, but we're using that other column that I showed you above, that column to the left of the, sec the column the second most to the right, where now, um, I'll move my cursor out, it's the portfolio return minus the minimum average return, see, instead of the portfolio average, we're squaring the differences, and then we're sort of averaging again because we divide by the number. Now, number of uh, the count. Now, above the number of returns that didn't meet our hurdle, we had 15 in this case. It happened to be, in my simulation, 15 of, in 15 of the months, if we look over here, 15 of the months, the portfolio return was below the hurdle out of a total of 30 months. We do not divide by the 15 here. We divide by the full 30 because we've got 30 months. So that means the fewer times that we fall below the hurdle, the smaller this number is going to get as appropriately. So we, don't, so we want to divide by the total count here, 30. So this gives us what we could call, uh, anal analogous to the monthly variance, it would be the monthly downside variance. And that means if we take the square root of it, we get the downside deviation. So that's the analog to the monthly standard deviation, but really it's the downside deviation that only really makes use of these returns that fall below the hurdle. And then finally, again, we annualize by multiplying by the square root of 12. So now we have an annualized downside deviation that is the analog to the volatility, but this is focused on the downside. So that means we have the numerator now of 2.5%, again, excess return above the hurdle, divided by downside deviation of 6.6%, gives us a Sortino of 0.39. So that's the generalization of the sharp, but focused on the downside. This is David Harper of the Bonnet Turtle. Thanks for your time.